Welcome back to the Homeowner's Cookbook. Our latest project has been finishing off our upstairs bathroom, which we had gutted back at the beginning of our renovations and have been slowly working to finish off over the last few months. Our latest project was installing this barn door. We decided to take a risk and install a barn door as the door for the bathroom. A couple of reasons we decided is one, because we love the look of the barn door, and two, because the space is set up really well. We've got a big blank wall right here, and because the bathroom isn't very large, we wanted to have that extra space you gain from not having the door swinging inside the bathroom. So we bought this kit from Home Depot. This was about $400, and it came with everything. The door, the header board, all of the hardware you need, even the screws to put the header board into the wall. And I wanted to give some tips now that we've got it installed on how we installed it and a couple of things to watch out for to hopefully save you some grief as you go to install one and hopefully help the process go smoother for you. So with the barn door, the first thing is ensuring that everything is level and not just level horizontally here, but also level this way. You want this track which bolts onto the header board after you mount the header board to the studs you want that to be level this way across the face because these rollers need to roll along an even surface. So those were the two things I checked for. I did have to shim because this wall isn't perfectly flat. I had to shim up under the header board itself down over the door. There was a little bit of a gap so I just took a shim and stuck it down in there before I screwed the header board um, so that my header board was even this way as well as level this way. Now you can see that the door itself, it doesn't roll. So I can stick it in any position here, open it fully, it'll stay open, and the same with it closed, it'll stay closed. That's important, if you don't get this header board level when you mount it, the door will start to roll open or close depending on how off your header board is there. So that's a really important thing to make note of. I followed the instructions that came with the door measure it up, it gives you the measurements and everything that you need. And because our floor isn't perfectly level either, I had to compensate for that. The space under the door is supposed to be around 3 8 to half an inch, but I measured the floor, I took my laser level and measured down from the line and figured out what my gap should be at the bottom and adjusted for that up here in the top. One thing I wanted to note is this door did not come finished. It was unfinished, both the header board and the door. And we used this oil-based wood stain. Uh, we used golden oak, and this is from Verathane, oil-based. And my wife actually stained both of these, put it on really thin because we wanted to see the wood grain and everything through there. This color matched our hardwood floors very nicely, and it turned out great. I love the way it looks. Another thing to watch out for is down at the bottom, there's a groove in the door. At least the door we bought, there's a groove and there's a little plastic piece that slides in there and it keeps the door from swinging in and out from the wall. And what I had to do is, because the floor wasn't level, I had to find a place where that would fit well and where the door doesn't ever slide off of that. So down on the floor, when the door is fully closed, the plastic piece sits inside the groove and when the door is fully open, it still sits inside the groove. So be careful with your placement of that and make sure that it, the door doesn't ever slide off of that because then it won't function as, as designed. Besides that, the last piece that I wanted to mention just from a safety perspective is on your header board, make sure to mark where your studs are. Use a stud finder in the wall um, and figure out where your studs are because what you want to do is mount the header board to the studs. That's the weight of the door is being held primarily off of that header board. And so make sure that when you mount the header board, I used all 10 screws. You do two in five different places and it comes with those screws, but I mounted those in there and that is holding the weight of the door. The other thing that you wanna do is put the header board on level ground before you mount it and mark the holes that you're gonna to need to drill for this rail here. So put it on the ground, mark the holes. That way when you mount the board up there, you can easily see where the holes need to be drilled for the anchors that get attached to the rail here and that gets attached to the header board. 
So I hope this has been helpful. If you're going to install a door, we love the way it looks and it's a little bit of a risk, you know, putting a sliding barn door on a bathroom. I'm not sure what the noise level is gonna be because it doesn't close airtight. I may end up putting a rubber seal on both sides of the door so that when it's closed, it closes the gap between the door trim and the door itself. So I'll let you guys know if I do that. Uh, it'll be, we'll test this out for a little while, see if it's too noisy. And if it is, then I'll, I'll work to compensate for that. But overall, extremely happy. If you're thinking about putting a barn door on your bathroom or a closet, just make sure you've got enough wall space so that you can actually put the header board where it needs to go. And good luck. Let me know if you have questions. And don't forget to subscribe, like this video if it's helpful, and I'll talk to you guys later.